26, 24. The Philadelphia Eagles are actively seeking their third wide receiver, and although it's still early days, veteran Paris Campbell is emerging as a strong contender. According to Chase Sr. of Chat Sports, quarterback Jalen Hurts frequently targeted Campbell, especially from the slot, during the initial OTA session last week. Updates and insights from Eagles OTAs. Notable absentees. Devonta Smith, Lane Johnson, Josh Sweat, James Bradbury, Jake Elliott, Kali Ringo. Following Devante Parker's retirement, the slot position for WR3 was primarily occupied by Paris Campbell. This session highlighted Campbell's involvement as he took numerous reps from the slot position. OTAs are optional, but new players, particularly those vying for roster spots, are expected to attend to familiarize themselves with the team. Campbell reunited with Nick Sirianni in free agency. Campbell's addition to the Eagles reunites him with head coach Nick Sirianni, who was the offensive coordinator for the Indianapolis Colts when Campbell was drafted in the second round in 2019. Unfortunately, injuries hindered Campbell's first three seasons. He achieved a breakthrough in 2022 with 63 receptions for 632 yards and three touchdowns. Campbell then joined the New York Giants in free agency, managing only 20 catches for 104 yards across 12 games in 2023. In his 44 career games, Campbell has amassed 117 receptions for 1,087 yards and five touchdowns, along with 11 carries for 108 rushing yards. The reunion with Sirianni and the opportunity to work with an elite quarterback like Hertz could help Campbell reach new heights, potentially matching or surpassing his 2022 performance. Ultimately, Campbell's success in 2024 will hinge on maintaining his health and performing consistently throughout the offseason. He faces competition for the WR3 spot from Britton Covey and rookies Aeneas Smith and Johnny Wilson. As an ardent Eagles fan, this news about Paris Campbell is absolutely exhilarating. Seeing Campbell get significant attention from Jalen Hurts during the first OTA session is a promising sign for our receiving core. His familiarity with Nick Sirianni's offensive schemes, dating back to their time with the Colts, gives him a unique advantage. Sirianni clearly sees untapped potential in Campbell, and this reunion could be the catalyst for a breakout season. Campbell's speed and agility, combined with his recent physical transformation, make him a tantalizing prospect for the WR3 spot. His 2022 season with the Colts, where he notched 63 catches for 632 yards, demonstrated his capability when healthy. This reunion with Sirianni and the chance to play alongside an elite quarterback like Jalen Hurts might just unlock another level in his game. The absence of key players like Devonta Smith and Lane Johnson during OTAs, while voluntary, has given Campbell an opportunity to shine and build chemistry with Hurts. His performance in these early sessions is crucial, especially considering the competition he faces from Britton Covey and promising rookies Aeneas Smith and Johnny Wilson. Campbell's history of injuries is a concern, but his ability to stay healthy and deliver consistent performances could make him a vital asset to our offense. The prospect of him reclaiming and even surpassing his career-best form from 2022 is exciting. His versatility and experience bring a different dynamic to our wide receiver group, which could be the missing piece to elevate our passing game. It's not just about filling the WR3 spot, it's about adding a player who can make impactful plays and keep defenses on their toes. Campbell's blend of speed, size, and familiarity with the playbook makes him an intriguing option, and I can't wait to see how he develops throughout the offseason. Overall, Campbell's potential resurgence with the Eagles under Sirianni's guidance is a storyline to watch closely. It's thrilling to think about the possibilities and the added depth he brings to our already potent offense. If he can stay healthy and continue to build rapport with Hertz, the sky's the limit for what he can achieve this season. Fly Eagles Fly Olho no lance! 
Silvio Luiz fez história com narrações marcantes sem grito de gol. O narrador Silvio Luiz morreu nesta quinta-feira aos 89 anos e deixou como legado transmissões históricas como bordões que marcaram o futebol brasileiro. Olho no lance para chamar a atenção de alguma jogada. Pelas barbas do profeta, na sequência de um lance desperdiçado. Pelo amor dos meus filhinhos, também para grandes lances perdidos. O que vou dizer lá em casa, depois de algum erro marcante? No meio da caneta dele, para um drible entre as pernas, no pau, após uma finalização na trave. Acerta o seu daí que eu arredondo o meu daqui, quando a partida começa. Balançou o capim no fundo do gol, na sequência da narração de gol. Silvio Luiz tinha uma particularidade, não gritava gol, como a maioria dos narradores. Quando a bola entrava, ele iniciava o grito, é... e na sequência dizia o nome do clube. Emendava, então, mais um bordão. Foi, foi ele, para anunciar o autor do gol. Eu não sou narrador, sou um legendador de imagem, porque a imagem é minha amiga, não posso nunca brigar com ela. Nunca gritei gol porque o cara está vendo a televisão. Por que eu vou dizer? Eu tenho que mostrar o fato jornalisticamente. Foi, foi, foi ele. Por que tenho que dizer quem fez o gol? Para quem foi o gol? A que horas foi o gol? Disse o Silvio Luiz em entrevista à Rede TV em 2023. Silvio Luiz morreu em decorrência de falência de múltiplos órgãos. Ele era casado com a cantora Márcia desde 89 e deixa três filhos, Alexandre, Andréia e André. O velório será realizado na sexta-feira a partir das 9 horas no cemitério Getsemane, no Morumbi, em São Paulo. O sepultamento ocorre no mesmo local, às 14 horas. Silvio Luiz Pérez Machado de Souza nasceu em 1934 na capital paulista. A carreira na comunicação teve influência da irmã, a ex-atriz Verinha Derci, morta aos 32 anos, vítima de feminicídio. Silvio participou de duas novelas, Eram Seis e Cela da Morte, como ator ao lado da irmã. Antes de ser consolidar como um dos maiores locutores esportivos do Brasil, Silvio Luiz foi árbitro de futebol entre o fim da década de 1960 e início dos anos 1970. No jornalismo, foi diretor de programação da Rede Record e trabalhou em diversos veículos, como Rádios Bandeirantes, Record, TV Excelsior, SBT, TV Paulista, entre outras. É isso, galera. Mais notícias. Continuem por dentro.